Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this numeric expression without the aid of a calculator. So some of you might feel, oh my goodness, I have to do math without a calculator. Yes, you definitely have to because uh, this is how you get better at arithmetic and other concepts that you're going to need beyond arithmetic like into algebra. But uh, this particular problem you could solve in a number of different ways, but you wanna be careful because there are a couple places where students tend to kind of um, make some errors. We'll talk about that as we get into this. But if you want to go ahead and try this problem again without the aid of a calculator and put your answer into the comment section, I'm actually going to show you the answer here in a second. But uh, when you're doing a problem like this, you want to try to take the most effective route uh, to get there. So I'm going to show you the way I'm going to approach this. And of course, if you did it a different way, as long as you got the right answer without a calculator, then that's what counts. But uh, we'll get to all that in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that think you're bad at math or maybe you're struggling in math. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out. Also, a lot of you don't even realize that you're going to be taking a test that has a dedicated math section, any sort of um, entrance exam, placement test, certification exam. Uh, you know, it's hard to get into any kind of training program or school without taking one of these uh, particular exams that I'm talking about. I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, Alex, AccuPlacer, maybe a teacher certification exam, ASVAB. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school mathematics courses for homeschoolers. If you need some great math notes, hopefully you have your own. If you do not, work on improving your notes. That will help you big time in math. But um, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to show you the answer here in a second. And again, don't use your calculator because if you use your calculator, then you know that kind of defeats the purpose of this problem. And here we go. Here is the answer. It is 7. Okay, so how many of you got that? If you got that, I must give you a nice little happy face with an A plus and a 100% for being pretty awesome. Matter of fact, we'll throw in a few stars to uh, make you feel extra special. That's very, very good. Now, the way you got this answer, well, there's a couple different approaches you could have taken, right? You could have figured out what 2 cubed is, and of course, that means 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 times itself 3 times. And then you figure out what 2 times itself 4 times is. Of course, that's 16. And then here we have 2 to the 5th. So you could have figured all this out, then added all this up and divided by 8. And if you took that approach, well, listen, excellent. As long as you got the right answer, that's what counts. But I'm going to show you uh, the approach that I'm thinking about. And, of course, we see we have a lot of powers here with the same base. So when you're dealing with powers, um, when we talk, when we use that word powers, there's basically two parts to a power. So let's take this, for example, 2 to the 4th power. This is how we um, describe this. It says 2 to the 4th power. But this big number down here is called the base. Okay, so this is the base, and this little small number here is called the exponent. The whole thing re is referred to as a power. So this is 2 to the 4th power. So a bit of a clue here is that we are dealing with um, various powers that have the same base. So some of you might be thinking, hmm, is there something easy I can do here? And there is. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, okay, I, we have 2 cubed plus 2 to the 4th plus 2 to the 5th in the numerator. I'm going to factor out 2 cubed. So you may not see it this way. You probably could see it a little bit better if, if you look at these actual numbers. 2 cubed is 8 plus 2 to the 4th is 16, plus uh, 2 to the 5th is 32. If I asked you, what is the greatest common factor? Hopefully you said, oh, they all have an 8 in common, and they do. Okay, so uh, one way we can write 8 is, of course, 2 cubed. So let's just make sure we have this uh, written correctly. If we want to factor out the greatest common factor with respect to these powers. So if I factor out an 8 or a 2 cubed, 
Uh, I'm going to show you here in a second why I'm going to do that. We're just kind of practicing our knowledge with powers. There's no really purpose to this problem other than just, you know, playing around with numbers and, you know, getting good by doing math without our calculator. But if I factor out a 2 cubed, which in fact is 8, which is the greatest common factor, let's just review that real fast. I think a lot of you could... Um, you know, standard review with the GCF. So here, this is 8, this is 16, this is 32. What's the factor of 8? Well, 8 and 1 is factors. How about 16? Well, 8 times 2 is factors of 8. So is 4 and 4, but I'm just keeping that 8 in common. And then, of course, we have 8 times 4 is 32. So all of these numbers have these fa this factor in common, 8. Okay, they also have a 2 in common and a 4 in common, but the greatest a uh, common factor. The greatest factor they have in common is 8. So when you see a situation like that, always factor out that GCF. That really makes things a lot easier. But we're going to kind of do this with powers. So we're going to factor out that 8 or 2 cubed. And now let's check that I did this correctly. If I multiply 2 cubed by 1, what happens? Well, 2 cubed or anything multiplied by 1 is that number. So that's okay. Now here is where it gets interesting. What happens if I take this 2 cubed and I want to get back to a 2 to the 4th? Well, this is where you have to understand properties of powers and exponents. So 2 cubed times 2 to the 1st is what? Well, when you are multiplying powers and the bases are the same, you simply add the exponents. So this is 2 to the 4th. So if I take that 2 cubed and multiply it by 2 to the 1st, I'm going to get back to 2 to the 4th right there. Okay, that's what I have in my second term. And then 2 cubed times this 2 to the 2nd power will get me back to 2 to the 5th. We can see that here, 2 cubed times 2 to the 2nd power. I'm adding the exponents 2 to the 5th power. Okay, so again, a lot of you are like saying, well, this is just, you know, nonsensical. Why are we doing all this? Well, again, we're practicing arithmetic. We're practicing concepts like greatest common factor, and we're pra practicing um, our understanding of working with powers and exponents. Now notice here, the denominator here is 8. Now I'm thinking, you know what, 8, I could write this as 4 times 2, and I'm like, oh, 4 is also 2 times 2, so 8 is really 2 cubed. So I'm going to go ahead and change that here. Now look at the situation I have. I have 2 cubed down here in the denominator, and I have a factor of 2 cubed here in the numerator, so I could cross-cancel these here immediately. So that's going to be pretty cool. But I'm going to show you a common error. Okay, This happens all the time in math, and I don't want you to make this mistake. Let's erase all of this. And if you made this error, I'm glad that you did, because this way you won't make it again. Uh, you'll be like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. But let's, um, let's suppose you saw this problem. And he said, oh, 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed. You're, you're thinking about this. That's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. So let's say you switch that 8 to a 2 cubed, okay? So that's good thinking right there. That is good thinking. But how many of you said, oh, I have a 2 cubed here and I have a 2 cubed here, and I could cross cancel this way? This is a, uh, one of the most common mistakes I see in basic arithmetic. If you did that, you're going to end up with this as your answer, Okay, which is 16 plus 32, this is incorrect. Okay, As we've seen, the answer is 7. So be careful here. You cannot cross-cancel. Uh, this is a part of a sum. Okay, uh, What you can cross-cancel is factors. So for example, 2 cubed times 5 over 2 cubed. This is a factor. I, it's part of multiplication. What's separating this number from this number is multiplication, i.e. that's a factor. So when you have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, you can cross cancel. So when I write this this way, 2 cubed, this is multiplication. We don't, little, we don't put a little multiplication there, but that's understood. So now I can cross cancel this 2 cubed, and we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll just put one line through it just like this. You don't want ever, when you cross cancel, you don't want to do like a bunch of scribbling like that. You want to show your teacher and yourself, you know, if you have to go back and reconstruct things, what you've done. So you're just going to cross cancel these two cubes, and now we're going to be left with this. So let's go ahead and figure that out right now. So 1 is, of course, just 1. 2 to the first is simply 2. 2 squared is 4. 1 plus 2 is 3. Plus 4 is 7. So again, you know, uh, you know, when I do problems like this, I'm kind of, you know, playing around with numbers in the sense that, hey, let's practice factoring out the GCF. Let's, you know, uh, practice cross-canceling. 
again, you could have uh, taken the approach of, uh, okay, this is 8 plus 16 plus 32, add all that up and then divide by 8, and that's perfectly fine. But you could see that you could do these problems in various different ways, and when it comes to algebra, you're going to have to be able to work with the greatest common factor and all these concepts like cross-canceling, like factors, etc. All right, well, hopefully this video was a nice little exercise. And if this is the case, if it helped you out some way, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you need help with basic math, I have a couple of courses that I would suggest. I have a Math Foundations course, which is an excellent kind of review. Um, I, uh, also, of course, I have Pre-Algebra and Algebra 1 and Beyond, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus. So whatever level you're at, uh, just go to my Math Help program. You can find that. But I also have a ton of YouTube videos that you can go in and just... Um, you know, I kind of spread it around from basic math all the way through calculus. So if you need help, I have tons of stuff out there. Hopefully you'll find that help. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.